Feels like there's a story there. Oh, check me out. Who? I mean, seriously, we're an album cover waiting to happen. Uh, I think she's going to be better. She's so bad. She's so pathetic. <laughs> to call Katherine Hahn bad or pathetic would be very unfair. She's a damn fine actress with a lot of fun roles under her belt. She was perfect for the role of Agatha in WandaVision, despite the disastrous ending of that show. And now she's back in her own show called Agatha All Along. I guess I finally settled on a title for this dredge. But why would Katherine Hahn agree to doing this show? And exactly how bad is it? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is Disney's Marvel. Before we dive in, take a moment to like and subscribe. If just a fraction of the 95% of you who watch but haven't subscribed yet, hit that button, it would make a huge difference in helping the channel grow. And the best part is, subscribing is completely free. Disney's Marvel has had a past few years that are, shall we say, less than stellar. From the disaster that was Phase 4 to all of the failed Disney Plus shows, Marvel has not had a good last five years. But as we heard from Chris Gore over at Film Threat, Marvel has cleaned house and fired all the activists. Unfortunately, certain projects were pretty deep into their development cycles, so they had to be released. Among those shows was Agatha All Along, a show whose audience only exists as a figment in the imaginations of these failed activists. I am just a figment of your imagination. Seriously though, I don't really think they learned their lesson from the raging dumpster fire that was the She-Hulk show. I've had my channel up for close to three years now, and in that time, Marvel just hasn't learned this lesson. They're making shows for imaginary audiences. She-Hulk was a show written by mid-30s single cat ladies for mid-30s single cat ladies. And what do we know about mid-30s single cat ladies? For the most part, by and large, they don't even own televisions, let alone watch much TV, much less watch comic book adaptations. So these producers are writing shows for non-existent audiences, which brings me neatly along to Agatha all along. This show is like the ugly stepsister of She-Hulk. The writing and dialogue are so atrocious that I actually feel bad for Katherine Hahn. I mean, she's a great actress that can only do so much with the shitty script that she was given. The plotline of the first two episodes can be briefly summarized as follows. The first episode sees Agatha trapped in some sort of spell where she plays a detective in a small town investigating a murder. But the spell is broken by beta male cuck kid that suddenly appears. As always, the formula is to make the male characters look pathetic and weak, and actor Joe Locke plays this role splendidly. So the two set about on a quest for some road of witches of some sort. Yeah, I'm about as interested in this as I am about catching norovirus at a local dining establishment. This show did make me think though, exactly how did the rise of terribly written shows start? I mean, remember Breaking Bad and Mad Men? When did writers forget how to write? This is a much larger question. My contention is that it's a generational thing that started with millennials and continues with Gen Z writers. Of course that's your Hang contention. On a You're a first year grad student. You as older writers with some actual life experience began to retire, younger writers took up the mantle. The participation trophy and undeserved praise that began with my generation, the millennials, continued on into Gen Z. These people were told by their helicopter parents how good their writing was despite how dog shit it was in reality. My theory is that's how shitty writing in Hollywood began. Or maybe the precipitous decline of the public education system, I don't know. Standards were lowered so profusely in order to level the playing field for the lowest common denominator. And you can see this in other areas of society. This so-called leveling of the playing field has completely eroded the meritocracy that this country was founded upon. That's how we get shows like Agatha all along. So is it worth watching Agatha all along? Well, if you like drinking paint thinner, be my guest. But I could barely make it through two episodes of this toxic sludge. 
It was such shit. The writing is so atrocious with the nonsensical plot and such piss poor dialogue that I can't possibly suggest subjecting you dear viewers to this. Do yourselves a favor and skip Agatha all along entirely. But what do you guys think about all this? Are there any of you who actually enjoyed this show? I would love to know. So please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one. Okie dokie. Yeah.